Okay, so double taxation, tax treaties and translation of foreign branch income tax incentives. This is where we want to move into the good stuff. The foreign tax credit, what do we, up, what do we want to talk about here? Okay, there's, these are just different things we want to cover now. I want to look at now is what do we mean by double taxation? And then I gave you an example of a foreign tax credit and what, what, how it applies to direct versus indirect. Then there's tax treaties, which is more a bit more, okay, this is what the law says is going on. And the next thing, well, you've already done translation of income before and tax incentives. The last two, we're not going to spend as much time on. Okay, so let's just start uh, one, two, and three we want to spend on now. All right, double taxation. All right, so we know that there's a bit of theory about double taxation, all right, and where the same income is taxed in a foreign country and in a country of residence, and we're trying to have neutrality. We're trying to encourage trade between different countries. And if there's double taxation, then it actually may negate trade. All right, and there's mechanisms for elimination, bilateral tax treaties and foreign tax credits. There are just literally hundreds of tax treaties, like China has 90 plus tax treaties with other countries around the world. Hong Kong has less than half that number, but they're negotiating tax treaties all the time. Okay, and they're always renewing and always updating. Okay, a tax treaty is, it's an agreement that if you pay Japanese tax, then the Hong Kong government will give you the credit uh, or if you pay, a Japanese company pays tax in Hong Kong, then they get the credit back in Japan. It's, it's just that agreement that you will get credit between two different countries. And it's to encourage multinationals to be multinational and not just to be one country. Okay. All right, what is the solution? Well, we can have a territorial approach. Okay, Hong Kong has the perfect solution because they don't count overseas income in your tax you pay in Hong Kong. So then you don't have to worry so much about tax you paid overseas, you see? But if I taxed your overseas income, then you've already paid it overseas? Oh, well then we need to work out the credit you should get. Okay, but not all countries are, like, are so narrow like Hong Kong, okay? Most of them are residency type, US is citizenship type, and so then you have a broader net so then you need more tax credits or deductions. Okay, US allows deduction of taxes or a tax credit approach. And so let's have a look at our first example we're coming up to, and we're talking about foreign tax credit example, double taxation, the calculation of a foreign tax credit. Now, when we're talking about direct, we are meaning a branch, okay? So write the word branch here. Direct, branch. Indirect, subsidiary. Okay? Direct, branch, indirect, subsidiary. So a branch is treated like an individual person. Okay? If you're a US citizen, then you're just taxed on your worldwide. If you're a branch, you're taxed. Okay? Same. So the foreign tax credit is the lower of actual taxes paid or taxes if income is earned in the US. And so there's uh, some formula here. And the good thing is you can carry it back one year or you can carry it forward 10 years. So that's a great thing. So what we want to do is have a look at an example. And now you're in your accounting class, so we've got to give you some numbers to think about, not just theory here. All right, so first of all, is GCO, is this company a branch or a subsidiary? It's a branch, okay. It's a branch, good, 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 all right. So it's gonna be treated like an individual or a company? It's gonna be treated like an individual, all right? So not much, there's not, nothing to do with dividends here, okay? So the Mexican rate is 33%, US rate is 35%, the foreign source income is 50,000, GCO pays 16,500 corporate income tax and 20,000 of other taxes. Now with the foreign tax credit, with the foreign tax credit, you only get a credit for the 16500 Circle that. The foreign tax credit only gives you the credit for income tax paid. You don't get a credit for 
non-income taxes paid. That's the tricky part, all right? You know the deduction approach or the credit approach. Under the deduction approach, you get to deduct all taxes paid. All right? So, un tax, you can have a choice. I'll give you two choices. Number one, I'll allow you to deduct the 36500 off your foreign income, and then you pay tax on the remainder. Or, let's work out your tax on your foreign income, and let's give you a credit for your income tax portion paid. You with me here, right? So, let me repeat. That's, so, that's the only difference, all right? The foreign tax credit is a narrow definition of what you get a credit for, but that credit you get is one to one. Every dollar you paid in income tax in a foreign country, you get back. Ah, but with the deduction approach, you got a huge net, everything you paid, right? But you don't get dollar for dollar credit for everything you paid. Because that comes off your income taxable, you see? And then what's remaining still gets taxed. Ah, you see that? See the difference? Let's have a look at the example where I show you the difference. So you can draw a little, I like drawing little nets like this. So the deduction approach catches more, right? But the credit approach catches less. What do we mean? Well, the credit only catches your income tax paid, right? But the deduction catches your income tax plus other tax. Okay? Goods and services tax. Other, other taxes that you pay. Huh? All right? With me? But when it comes to getting a credit, it's a bit like this. You actually get a one-to-one. -one. But the deduction approach, you're getting something. You're not getting one-to-one -one back because it's deducted off your income. So even though the deduction approach, wow, this looks much better because you get all of it back. No, you don't get it all back. It just reduces your income taxable it just reduces your income tax. Let's have a look at the numbers. There we are. See? There's the deduction. Look, it reduces your foreign source income, but you still pay tax on 13500 And so then you get the US tax on that, 35%, and so then you pay 4725 Credit, it's not deducted off income. You pay tax on that, but then you get one-to-one -one back, so you only pay 1000 Ah, wow, that's a big difference. So foreign tax credit is very, very popular. Very, very popular. It's only in some rare circumstances where the deductions are so large that the benefits are greater than the credit. You with me? All right. Wow. You know, like... I think if you're in a country where it's less than 20% income tax and there's more deductions, then you might see a big, bigger difference between the two, where the deduction approach is much more beneficial. All right, and there's another example. This is in the book. Deduction here, credit here. Guess what? Which one would you like? Hands up for deduction approach. Hands up for credit. Ah, good, good, good. All right, so... All right, now credit approach is very, very popular. Very, very popular. Okay, we're good. 